This is Shuttle Launch Control at T-minus 3 hours, 19 minutes, and counting. Final inspection team has arrived at Launch Pad 39A at the base of the pad, and uh, they will be preparing to begin a nearly two-hour inspection to look for any frost or ice buildup on the external tank. They'll begin on the 255-foot level and proceed down the fixed service structure to various levels, the 215-foot level, the 195-foot level, and the 135-foot levels, as well as the mobile launch platform. Additionally, the closeout crew has arrived at the pad, and they will be uh, preparing the white room for astronaut arrival. STS-118 is the 119th space shuttle flight, and it's the 20th flight for Space Shuttle Endeavor and the 22nd mission to the International Space Station. Endeavor has been uh, undergoing modifications and processing for 1,703 days, having completed the STS-113 mission uh, on December 7th of 2002. At that time, it began an orbiter major modification officially on December 1st, 2003, which lasted until September 27th of 2005. During that time, 194 major modifications were performed, including the installation of the MEDS multi-electronic display system, known as the glass cockpit. Also, the Station to Shuttle Power Transfer System, or SPITS, was installed and will give Endeavour the ability to extend its stay at the International Space Station by several days. A three-string global positioning system was installed and will be utilized on STS-118 for the first time to help guide Endeavour nearly to the ground on landing day. Thicker window panes were added to Windows 1 and 6 and the Orbiter Boom Sensor System, or OBSS, was added to perform inspections of Endeavour's thermal protection system. The closeout crew and final inspection team are preparing to do their jobs at Launch Pad 39A. During the processing and major modifications for Endeavour, 2,045 shuttle tiles were removed and replaced compared to the average 100 tiles during a standard vehicle flow. There are approximately 24,000 tiles on the vehicle, so about 10% of them were replaced. And over 3,000 gap fillers were installed and pull tested. Also, over 2,000 thermal blankets in the cargo bay were removed and replaced. process began for loading the 143,000 gallons of liquid oxygen and 325,000 gallons of liquid hydrogen. The final member final inspection team is now at the launch pad, having been dispatched at the conclusion of tanking three hours after it began, and they will be there for approximately three hours. Activities underway during the past hour have been the inertial measurement unit pre-flight calibration, the alignment of the MATA tracking station antennas with the launch pad, and the initial communications checks with the Air Force Eastern Range. The final inspection team has been measuring the temperatures on the surface of the vehicle, looking for any ice buildup and performing a final check for any FOD or foreign object debris that could strike the orbiter upon ignition and liftoff. The seven-member team will have walked up and down the entire 380-foot tower of the fixed service structure at the conclusion of their inspections. And the closeout crew is also now in the white room at the pad, awaiting the arrival of the STS-118 astronauts. At T-minus three hours and holding, this is Shuttle Launch Control. This is Shuttle Launch Control, T-minus three hours and holding, and we're at the uh, astronaut crew quarters now, entering the 
astronaut dining room where we see our STS-118 uh, crew members getting ready for a brief snack. So, uh, Chris, maybe you could tell us who the crew members are from left to right. Yeah, absolutely, George. Uh, on the on the left is uh, Air Force Colonel Al Drew. Al will be uh, was a, a late addition to the crew after Clay Anderson was swapped to the STS-117 crew. So it's exciting for Al. He's a uh, mission specialist uh, from the class of 2000. Uh, just to Al's left and on the left side of the screen now is Canadian astronaut Dave Williams. Dave's a medical doctor who has uh, previous flight experience and, and has been working with NASA for quite some time now. To his left is uh, Marine Corps Colonel Charles Hobaugh, and uh, he's the, the pilot of the, of, the, of the crew. Charlie's making his, his uh, second flight to space. Seated in the center is the Commander Scott Kelly. Scott is a, a Navy captain who also is making his second flight to space and, and uh, of course, will be the leader of the whole, the whole mission. Next to him is Mission Specialist Tracy Caldwell. Tracy will be the MS-1 on the flight deck for the, the launch portion of the mission. To her left is uh, Mission Specialist Rick Mastracchio. Rick is the lead spacewalker and will be, will be EV-1 for the, uh, for the first three EVAs. And if there if there's if there's another EVA, he he won't he won't conduct the EVA, EVA number four. But he, he's the lead spacewalker. And Barbara Morgan, who as we all know was was the last one on the right, she's a mission specialist, heavily involved with robotics and uh, crew transfer, and of course our educator astronaut. Well, uh, after the uh, crew leaves the dining room, what's the first thing they usually do after the, the event that we usually see? Well, that, that would begin the process for getting suited up, and, and um, that kind of formal formal snack that they're having there um, sort of is a nice tie, lead in to, to the actual operations and, and get totally focused on getting, getting suited up and getting out to the pad and, and start working the procedures and climbing into the vehicle and looking towards for the clock to start moving. We'll be looking at the weather at two locations here at Kennedy Space Center, at Launchpad 39A, and also at the shuttle landing facility should a return to launch site be necessary. To meet those criteria, essentially, we must have no thunderstorm activity within 10 miles of the pad or 20 miles of the shuttle landing facility. At the time of launch today, we are expecting three layers of scattered clouds at 3,000, 6,000, and 25,000 feet, a visibility of 7 to 10 miles, a wind from the east at 8 to 12 knots, a temperature of 86 degrees with a relative humidity of 70 percent. And we're still going at this point with uh, just a 20% chance of not meeting the launch weather criteria this afternoon, primarily due to the possibility that an isolated thunderstorm may affect our return to launch site conditions at the shuttle landing facility. We have one hour, 40 minutes, and 40 seconds remaining in this planned built-in hold. We have uh, members of the uh, final inspection team on the mobile launcher platform right now finishing up the inspections. And of course, they're looking upward here at the external tank with their spotter scopes and telescopes, as well as looking at the other parts of the vehicle as well.